Ed Walker is doing it at 11, and he thought that meant he had to do it at both. So I, I already had to. Well, good morning. It's good to see you and to be gathered here. We uh, weathered the storm of late last night. And uh, uh, those who are joining us here in person, we're glad to, to see you. For those who are joining us online, uh, we are thankful for your presence. Glad you're connecting with us today. Uh, we hope uh, you'll, you'll sign in. If you're uh, online, please make a comment or uh, let us know that, that you're watching. Uh, if you're here, we have our registration pads that are in the pew. If you'll be sure to sign in, that's a, a great way for us to, to track your attendance and know you've been uh, here with us, so we encourage that. Uh, just one announcement I want to share with you, a, a, a sad word. Uh, uh, late Thursday night, uh, former pastor here at uh, First Church, Edmund, uh, Don Nobles, passed away. And uh, so the, uh, we want to hold his family in our prayers. As we gather now for worship, we uh, uh, come with uh, a million things on our mind, uh, a million different directions that we've been running, but we come with one heart. Uh, we tune our hearts, our minds, our spirits uh, to God's presence with us, to the spirit of the community as we join together in worship.
please stand and join in the call to worship. Blessed be our God, who created us in God's image. Blessed be our God, who called us to follow Jesus Christ. Blessed be our God, who sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. Blessed be our God, in whom we live, move, and have our being. Blessed be our God, as we gather and worship. I invite you to be seated and let us join together in our congregational prayer. Holy One, help us to live into your ways of holiness. Help us to cultivate a practice of sacred living, setting aside time for you. Guide us into ways of living that are sustainable, that care for all creation, and do not waste your resources. Lead us in your way of deep compassion for ourselves and for one another. Help us to find the holy in our everyday lives, in the dandelions that grow in the cracks of the cement, in simple acts of kindness shown, in the pauses between the busy. Remind us to breathe, for this simple act is the first act of human life, when you breathe your spirit into human beings. May we cultivate holiness in our daily life and be holy for you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Creator, this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Help us to joyfully embrace the excitement of a world where common things become divine as you infuse us with meaningful purpose and beauty. Help us not to miss this day or even a moment as a fresh unfolding journey. Fill us with thankfulness for a cooperative spirit among us as we seek to be your hands and feet in the world. Connect us this day to those hurting who need your healing touch. Unite our spirits with your intimate and comforting ways. Heal us as we praise your countless blessings and seek to share with others your unlimited love for humankind and all creation, and fill us with strength and hope as we offer your grace to everyone. 
Amen. And now let us pray together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our next hymn is number 365, uh, Grace Greater Than Our Sin. Let us stand and join together in singing. Our scripture lesson this morning comes to us from the letter of Ephesians, beginning in the first chapter at the third verse. Listen for God's word for you this morning. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, bestowed, has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us to the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us, with all wisdom and insight, he had made known to us the mystery of his will, 
according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather all things to him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's often in the casual conversations we have that uh, we, we learn uh, a lot about each other. You should hear some of the uh, war stories that were going on between the choir and uh, this morning and myself. We all shared together uh, ministry moments. and. Um, I, this week, you know, Don came in the office, and uh, it, you, you know, I mean, how great a guy Don is, right? I mean, uh, uh, you know, he, 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 he lifts people up, he, uh, you know, just offers a great word, and he said, you know, one of the things that, 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 you know, we all know about you for sure is how great your eyesight is with that little Bible that you use and you read from, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and then I had to confess that uh, while I have the scripture there I printed out in a little bigger version to to read from for worship so I devotionally I do use this and it is small I love the you know that I can carry it it's easy to get around with but but when I it comes for for worship I want to make sure I can see it so I do put it in big print for for worship and and you know that a bible it really becomes a friend to us in our life doesn't it um I, it's probably time for me to move to a, another one, but uh, this one we've we've covered a lot of territory together, so I still want to uh, hang on to it in a, a way. Um, and when we read the Bible, uh, have you noticed how um, there are those favorite scriptures that we have? Uh, when we we read scripture, I think sometimes um, you know we go and we're just open to whatever it is God has to say to us and there's an openness we have in reading scripture there are times when we really want to hear those words that we know are ours um, and we go to those scriptures that we have that uh, are, you know we go to it and we read it and it says that's me that's it has my name we uh, we can see ourselves in that scripture uh, there are other times when we read the scripture and it leaves us with more questions than it does answers. It leaves us puzzled about, uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure I understand that, and I'm not, I'm not sure if I understand it, I agree with that. Um, there's a way that Scripture pushes us. Uh, and, and, and to be completely honest, in our Scripture this morning, um, both of those things are happening for me. There are parts of it that as I read it, um, man, it speaks to me. Uh, when it says that, that, um, that God's intention for all creation is to be redeemed and that we are, all things are to be brought together in him, things in the heavenly places and things here on earth, that there's nothing outside of God's intent for reconciliation, and that is the destination toward which we are headed. Um, man, that resonates with me. It feels... I feel it in my spirit because I know enough brokenness in myself that needs to be restored in him. And, um, and, and in, in Christ, those things are, are brought together. And he tells us how that's the case. Um, there are parts of it that are harder for me where it talks about, um, about God's plan in such a way that uh, I, there, there are beautiful pieces to it, but um, one of the struggles I've always had in my life is about the, the, the belief of God's will and God's, uh, I, I, I talk about it maybe in ways that soften it a little bit, God's intent and direction for life. But um, there, you'll hear some talk about God's will in such a way that it sounds predestined. 
that it's already set out, and there's really little that we can do about that. And, um, and that, that's hard for me. Um, part of it's it, in our Methodist heritage, uh, such a strong claim of free will that, um, that God invites us into a relationship. But it's our choice whether to enter into that or not. And, and that part of free will is so strong within me uh, that, that God has already decided it ahead of time seems hard. And yet there's a part of, um, of God's intent about the world and about life that uh, is so opening um, that when it says from before the foundations of the world, God adopted us. God chose us to be a part. And that sense of chosenness, uh, it, it feels good uh, to know that, that God has that kind of understanding and, and knowledge about us. But it also is hard because then we think about what, um, has it already been decided? Are my choices even relevant? Maybe it's my own prideful self, but uh, I don't want anybody else telling me what to do. Uh, and that part is hard. I know when we read scripture, um, it doesn't always fit together in such a way that I understand it all. Uh, you, someone had said, um, if in your life there are difficult people put in your life and hard to live with people, then you have the makings for a good story. Because what kind of story would it be if everyone in your life was just easy and everything just went swimmingly forward? Um, that would, you know, I, we might wish that in the, in the time when we're facing difficulty, but life is so much more interesting. And the plot of our life, of story, is so much more whenever there, uh, we see the difficulties that we face in our lives. Um, and we see them in context. This scripture is uh, fascinating, too, because it, it composes uh, from, from, from verse 3 to verse 14, uh, 11 verses. But in the Greek, it is one sentence. Um, have you ever known anybody that had that kind of a run-on sentence in their life? Uh, maybe. It, it, it seems like, and you could just almost imagine Paul in his enthusiasm, his excitement, just trying to spill it, and one more thing, and, 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 and it just keeps getting stretched on and on. Um, there's something about that kind of enthusiasm that is there. Maybe it is, as we think about our sense of God's love and care for us and how uh, our lives play out, could it be that some of the events and experiences and people in our lives that some, sometimes seem to be accidental in our lives are really not. Maybe those things string together in such a way to create us into the unique people that we are. Maybe a part of the design of the plot that pieces it all together. Instead of these pieces uh, as things that we think may be better off not to include. These pieces become a part of the larger picture as we put it together, the larger narrative that plays out in our lives. God saying that you are chosen. Um, it feels good to be chosen. It feels good. Um, in our kind of American culture, I, know, I think we often think of being chosen as... Uh, those who, and we think about those who are unchosen, uh, almost like a game of kickball in school. Um, we'll pick him or we'll pick her, and others are not chosen or selected. Um, maybe there's something larger about God's grace that is not about one being chosen and another not. Maybe there's a chosenness to all of us. Maybe there's a chosenness to the uh, way in which our life is selected and the piece is put together that it's all a part of God's larger picture. And as Paul begins to talk about the plan that God has in reaching back, not, not about what the plans are forward, although it does give us the picture of that, uh, but says, but all the way back before the foundations of the world, uh, you were chosen, we were chosen. There's a, 
a looking back and a looking forward that we can only understand the present in when we have the context of both of those together. The mystery of God's way. Uh, mystery, um, I think, I, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I think it takes years of experience to appreciate mystery. When I was younger, I didn't like mystery. I wanted it solved. I wanted it fixed. Um, maybe a way to explain that is the, uh, my daughter, who takes on many of my own personality traits, um, she will not read a novel without reading the end first. <laughs> you know, she wants to know where it's going, wants to have control. But there's a sense of mystery that's so much larger and I think more beautiful. Um, but I didn't like mystery. I wanted it all planned out. I wanted it all mapped out. I wanted to know where the pitfalls were. I wanted to know where the difficulties would be. I wanted to know the bright, shiny, fun days, the incredible relationships. I'd like to know that. And now, I really don't much care. I, I'm, I'm more interested in the ride and more interested in the mystery of embracing. I, I, I don't have to understand how God does it all. Um, I can just trust that God does and that this is my place within it. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a beauty to mystery, and we're invited into this incredible mystery that God has an intention for, for the reconciliation of all that is. In all the heavenly places and in all the earthly places, everything that you've had in your life, the difficulty, the struggle, there's not a part of us that God isn't interested in being reconciled ultimately to God. There's not a part of our lives, not a part of our families, there's not a part of any of us that God isn't interested in being reconciled uh, to God's self through Jesus. And, and that's an amazing gift. We don't have to understand it to be able to enjoy it. We're able to just embrace it. It's... Um, maybe a bit like a puzzle. I, I had an aspiration this week. It was aspirational. Uh, it did not play out. Um, but I, I bought a puzzle this week. I didn't even get a chance to start working on it. It's a, a, a puzzle of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. It, it was kind of a big undertaking, so why even get started, right? <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, I've never been there, but, but, but the, the way in which it's created and painted, there's so many different panels, and it's, it's, it's literally uh, an image of many paintings, many stories from scripture, from church history that are there. Uh, you know, the thing about puzzles is you, know, you begin and you start, and if you just look at one piece of the puzzle, it doesn't make a lot of sense by itself, does it? In fact, you could, uh, you, most of us start by putting together the border of it, right? So we can get the frame. And then we begin to work our way in or find pieces that match up with each other. Uh, some knowledge of what the full picture is is helpful, but it, it's still not going to get you there uh, without a lot of work and a lot of trying. Um, and I think maybe our life is a bit like that, isn't it? Maybe the mystery of it is that, that um, there's a piece of it that we get at one point in our lives, and we may not understand it. We may not understand it in, at all. Uh, in fact, it might be so much so that we have it upside down and we're looking at the back. Uh, life can come at us in that way. Uh, we, we can, it, it can just come so big and heavy that we are so disoriented, we can't even know if we're looking at the right side of it or not. Um, it can be hard. There are parts of the puzzle that are dark. Uh, sometimes it's only by uh, seeing the darkness of some of those pieces of the puzzle that we appreciate the, the light. And that's the case of this one. Uh, most of it is light, but there are places of darkness in it. Um, I think a lot of our life is like that. A lot of it we just can't know or understand until we've been able to put a few more pieces together. And we may get a really good grasp of one corner of it and still have so much more that we do not understand. 
The thing I know about people of faith, Mother Teresa, Billy Graham, both I know have expressed this, that the more that they come to understand in faith, the more they realize how much there still is yet to know. Um, so much more mystery beyond what we grasp and we hold on to, uh, like a piece of the puzzle. And when we find that one that helps us, we hang on to it, uh, we hold on to it, and we soon search for other pieces that will fit in with it. And, and honestly, it may not be too different than how we sometimes view Scripture. Sometimes Scripture gives us a truth, and we hold on to that piece uh, because it gives us a lifeline to understand. Um, and then some are just total mysteries, and we pick it up, and we look at it and like, I don't have a clue where this fits in the puzzle. And we put it back down and we begin to try to find the places. So much of, I think, our understanding of Scripture is like that. And, and too often, someone will grab a Scripture and like, there, that one, you know. And, and we use it kind of inappropriately. Um, that's not what, what it is. That, that's one part of the larger truth. And you can't understand that piece unless you understand this piece and another piece and how they all fit together in the larger picture. Um, they never are the full puzzle until it's the full puzzle. All things together in Christ. Um, that that's God's intent for our creation, our lives. The relationships that we have, we may not understand until we get a little further along in the puzzle being pieced together. Um, the pieces of it in our lives, the, the difficulties that we've gone through, the diagnosis, the heartbreak in relationships, uh, we may not understand until we get a few more pieces put together. But what Paul seems to be saying to us is that it's God's intention that it all holds together in him, that our life is reconciled through the work of Christ in our lives, all things holding together in him. Redemption is what is at the end, and all those pieces, all those experiences coming together as the part of God's puzzle of creation, of God's reconciling our lives. We really won't understand it all, will we, until that final piece is placed in. We'll have greater understanding. There'll be deeper knowledge. There'll be moments of victory. There'll be moments of struggle. But there'll one day be that moment of the final peace coming in. And when that is there, we will know the complete. We will know the complete reconciliation of our lives to God. Amen. With this message from the word in our hearts and minds, let us join together in our prayer of brokenness and confession. Almighty God, we confess that we have succumbed to the ways of the world. We are consumed by the doubts of the world, that we are not good enough, that we don't have enough wealth and security compared to others. Forgive us, God, for you called us to be your children. In you, we have an abundant inheritance. In you, we know that we are a community of care for each other and the world. In you, the standards we should live up to are kindness, compassion, justice, and mercy. Help us to cast off the cares of the world and live deeply in your ways and as your children. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. There's abundant love to be found in God through Jesus Christ. Seek Christ in all you do and know how deeply God loves you. There's abundant forgiveness in Christ for all sins. There's abundant grace for all of us. Live into God's ways, knowing that you are loved and forgiven. God is with you now and for all time. Amen. 
Let us continue our worship together with our affirmation of faith. I believe in God who places joy in our souls, dancing in our toes, and songs in our hearts. I believe God wanted gladness to flow like a river and so created a bountiful earth with plenty for all to share. I believe in Jesus who turned water into wine with friends, with outcasts and sinners and touched the broken so they could leap and dance. I believe Jesus opened the doors and set an extra place so we all could feast. I believe in the Holy Spirit who prompts us to smile, who sends us invitations to come and dine, who nudges us to openness and tenderness. I believe the Spirit is present every time we gather to break bread and is always urging us to live joyfully and walk hopefully forever. I will live in the embrace of God and be a witness to the joy of new life. I invite you to be seated, and as the ushers come forward, let us think about what it means to be the people of God who make sure that heaven comes on earth by what we do as God's hands and God's feet. You can give, of course, as indicated on the screen by texting or by giving in the offering today or sending a check to the church. Let us pray. We come to you today humbled by all the blessings and beauty you give us, Lord. As your people, we now offer what we have to reach out to those who are in need right now. We thank you for this opportunity to make a difference in the lives of our brothers and sisters. In your name, amen.
closing hymn is number 555, Forward Through the Ages. Let us join together in singing. send you forth in the name of the one who created you, who has your best intention at heart, who is the design of your life. I send you forth in the name of his son, Jesus, who reconciles us to the God, our, our father and creator. I send you forth full of the Holy Spirit to embody the living out of God's kingdom in your daily lives. Amen. Amen. Howdy, how are you? Fine, thank you. Doing well. Hi there, how are you? Good, good to see you. Hey Dennis. Ken, good to meet you. Okay, all right, great. Hey, how are you? <laughs> good to see you guys. Fun. Yes, good to see you. Thank you, good to be here. Hi, how are you? Thank you. Good morning, how are you? I'll be back in a Okay, we'll see you then. 